Thank you very much. Uh, wonderful material again. All right, so the last speaker in the session, uh, we're pleased to honor, or pleased to welcome Dr. Brent Weinberg from uh, Emory. He's gonna be talking to us about YouTube, uh, another uh, little cog in the social media wheel. Brent. All right, thank you everyone for coming today. Thank you to Christine and the organizers for putting this together. Um, you know, I have a couple disclosures. I, I do some outside consulting for Canon and an AI company called Avicenna. I do get a little money from YouTube actually too, so if you go to this after this, I'll get like a 40th of a cent. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, my other disclosure, this is my first time at this meeting, I'm at best a C plus head and neck um, neuroradiologist. I teach it at the remedial level for our residents. They love it because I read it at their level. Uh, so it's great that I've been able to learn uh, some from the boot camp and everything here. My goals for today are to kind of introduce you to what online video education can achieve, particularly in the context of YouTube, tell you a little bit about my experiences over the last couple of years, and kind of inspire you to think about, can you do uh, something like that, or is there something that you uh, want to do? I think it meshes really well with the talks that we've already seen uh, this morning. To give you a little background, like how did I get started on this? In 2016, I finished my fellowship. I had some teaching materials. There were things I was constantly referring to, things about when you might do a blood patch, like things about uh, anticoagulation guidelines and things like that. And so I put it on a small website called learnerradiology.com. And I noticed that people were kind of viewing it, but uh, it's, I sort of like sort of languished for a couple of years. But then in 2018, I had a couple of lectures I hadn't given in a couple of years, and I was like, well, maybe you know, people would want to see them. And so I posted a few uh, short videos. One was a neuroradiology lecture called Basic Radiology, and it's exactly as basic as you think it is, because like I said, I'm a remedial radiologist. And uh, I kind of broke some lectures into some small pieces and uh, kind of posted it on YouTube, kind of co-linked it on the website. And then uh, it was really just a small effort, like kind of a side thing I did like on a weekend. And then in about the first 20 months, people were watching these videos that I thought were dumb and like wouldn't, wouldn't generate a lot of interest. And in the first year and a half or so, like it, these videos got about 50,000 views. And I've, I did a PhD, I wrote all these papers. I guarantee like nobody has seen the papers that I wrote 50,000 times. And so it was interesting to me to see like, like sort of what was, what was available out there. And so I, I you know, started doing like a little bit more and uh, to my surprise, like people kept watching, right? And this is like a, a GIF that YouTube sends you when you get a thousand subscribers. It says like, this is bananas and like has animated bananas. And that's exactly how I felt. I was like, this is bananas. Like that there's like, who are these nerds? And, uh, and kind of like, where are they coming from? And, but it kind of inspired me to do it more, right? Because I was like, well, the people are watching these. And so, so I'll do it more. And it, you know, kind of doing more videos, it's like, well, you can, you can actually get more subscribers and there are people out there. I continue to wonder like, who are all these people? Um, because YouTube is like inspiring you. It's like you have now 25,000 hours of watch time. It's like, that's a, that's a lot. Like I, I think, you know, there's a lot of people. Now the, ch the channel has kind of grown to over 20,000 subscribers. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. There are not 20,000 people at this meeting. There are 20,000 radiologists in the US, but not by a whole lot. Um, a lot of it's going to patients, uh, people who are techs, people who are just interested in the topic, neurologists, um, ENT surgeons, those kind of people, are, you know, they're watching videos and like you kind of, kind of see this. Um, so now I'm gonna kind of focus for the last 10 minutes or so on like the 10 of the lessons that I kind of felt like I learned. Um, there is a demand for online video education. Like, and I saw this, I discovered this by accident myself. Um, I think for a long time in medical education, we have ignored people who don't learn from traditional methods. We have like given people books and said like, go read this book, like you should be reading for three hours a day, even though we know people aren't doing that. Um, but like I said, videos reach a different audience. It's people who learn differently. It's people maybe who you aren't seeing in the reading room. Uh, people who may be at residencies that don't have the caliber of education from people who are presenting at this conference and things like that, other medical specialties who don't have the opportunity to learn uh, with, with great radiologists in the reading room. I, I don't mean to insult like uh, Dr. Manister, but like this is how we're using uh, books these days. Um, you gotta get that side monitor 
to the same level as your PAX monitor. Um, you know, I'm sorry, Dr. Barkovich, the pediatric neuroradiology book that I bought is on my shelf, still in the plastic. <laughs> um, not everyone learns from books, and uh, I, I think like the era that we're in, we need to. Uh, I mean, we need to meet people as we are, as we heard, or meet people where they are, like as we are in the previous lecture. Availability and organization, like, are really key to getting people to watch it, right? Like, and I think free or inexpensive is huge. We see from Radiopedia, like, how important that is because it's really changed the way our residents look up things. Like, they know that if you want to learn about, you know, incomplete partition defects, the way to do it is type incomplete partition Radiopedia in Google, and like that gets them exactly where they need to go. Ideally, you want to show up like in the first page of searches, and preferably you don't want to be behind a paywall. This is uh, if you search for neuroradiology videos on YouTube, um, it, you know, by, by getting proper tags, like posting frequently, having things labeled, uh, you can see the site is actually has about six uh, links on the first page. And so people go to the first page. They don't go to the second page. So if it's behind a paywall or it's not showing up there, it's not going to work. You can look, you know, you, you, uh, Google has sort of a search console where you can see, like, for individual terms that people put in, where does your site, where does your site show up? And, you know, you can see, like, if you look at a neck radiology here, you know, I show up at 6.6, .6, which for me is pretty good, like I said, as a C plus uh, uh, head and neck radiologist. Uh, but, but I think it's important to keep track of these things and like try to be available, uh, try to be on that first page. Frequent updates, clear tags, and make it available uh, can really uh, give you high search results. A counterexample to this, and I don't mean to like dump on our societies, but RSNA, uh, they, they had did this attempt to like open a case <coughs> collection to kind of I'm going to say it's a Radiopedia competitor. They wanted to have like high quality cases that people could look up. It was behind a membership paywall, or you could see like a little bit of the case and then you had to log in. It spent a lot of time. Many people in this room were probably like associate editors because there were like 70 associate editors. People spent a lot of time and then they just abruptly shut it down because it wasn't getting the views that they wanted. It wasn't getting the traction that they wanted. And I, I was a little upset about this because, you know, we spent a lot of time trying to build this up. Uh, if you don't make it available and it's not there, it will, it will not succeed. So if you're in the leadership of a society, just, just think about that a little bit. Try to make it easy to find. Try to make it organized by topic. <coughs> Have text descriptions. Like if you're doing a video, that's how it gets found, right? Like the video, well, I was going to say the video can't search what you're saying in the video. <coughs> But it actually does that too. Uh, but, uh, but if you have text descriptions, that's helpful. Um, this is a little video from the companion website, right? And like, so this is, you can check it out at some point if you want. But everything is kind of organized. Like you can kind of go through by the menu. We have some courses. For topics, you can like scroll down. You can click head and neck imaging. You can see all of the video posts like by topic. You can click head and neck. It's sort of organized by what level you are, like if you're a medical student. If you want to search, like say you want to search for temporal bone, you come down to the bottom, you type temporal bone, and you can see which videos are about temporal bone. You can see one about search pattern, one about pathology, so you can kind of find things uh, easily, which I think is, is super important. Attention spans are super short, okay? YouTube will tell you how long people are watching videos. This is the average watch duration like over a period of a year. So this is like in, for the last 365 days. You can see this graph has gone up and down a little bit but it is basically the same at three minutes and 16 seconds. That's what you get. <laughs> I've been talking like for nine minutes now, like six minutes just into the wind. You guys have heard nothing. Um, just keep that in mind, like when you're making a video, right? Like, or if you're doing something like that, keep that in mind we were giving a lecture in a room like this. Like you had three minutes to like get your impact. Um, and this has not changed, no matter what kind of content it is, three to four minutes. Maybe people watch like cooking videos for longer, I don't know. Uh, you can see you lose most people in the first 30 seconds. Like those are probably people who found the video and then realized it wasn't actually what they were looking for. Or maybe they're people who just thought you were boring and were looking for a better one. Um, and then, you know, 30, 40 percent of people will, will kind of hang around until, until the end. Uh, so you're really, it's really important to catch people's attention in that first 30 seconds and then, uh, you know, kind of, kind of go from there. 
well-designed content performs better. This is like the dumbest advice I've given you. <laughs> better videos do better, right? Short, that targeted time of three to 10 minutes, introductory level videos perform much better than high level or you know, very detailed and uh, sort of high level videos. Targeting them to an online audience is, is super important as well uh, because you kind of, if you have some, if you kind of think about who's watching and, and not just have it like you would deliver in a room, in a room like this, taking a one hour lecture that you gave uh, to residents it typically doesn't work. It doesn't have the energy level that you're trying to deliver. It doesn't catch people's attention in that first 30 seconds. It tends to just, uh, to just not work. Here is uh, just, this is sort of the head and neck, some of the top head and neck content that's on the site. Um, you can see if you look at these, you read the titles, they are the simple videos, okay? How to read a sinus CT. Laryngeal cancer staging in five minutes. <coughs> Temporal bone search pattern. These are simple videos are what people are looking for. And you think about that because the people are, who are reading or are watching these videos are first year residents, trainees and other specialties. They're looking for introductory and basic level content. Uh, but targeted and short, and short videos can really be, can be successful. If you're doing this kind of thing, you're gonna need help. Like I said, I'm not that great ahead of neck radiologist. I wanna give a big shout out to Katie Bailey, like one of my colleagues who works at the University of South Florida. She's helped me a lot with head and neck content, has really made a lot of the head and neck videos. You can expand your expertise by enlisting your colleagues. I know I'm not great at it. I learn from the videos, like I, I you know, edit them to put them on the site and I learn something every time. And so reach out to people and, like, and help, uh, help yourself by, by getting help from other people. Cross promotion and consistency are important. Like if you do it frequently, uh, you will get more attention. Like there's an algorithm, right? And if you post on Twitter or social media, if you post frequent sites, you can see like this is views over time. You can see like little bumps like here and there. And this is the number of videos posted in that time period. So <coughs> posting like clusters of videos leads to bumps. And, and so that, uh, so if you can do it consistently, do it in clusters like that is, uh, that can be helpful over time. I simultaneously post everything, like I said, sometimes on social media. Everything is sort of cross-linked on the website. That tells the algorithm that this is like legitimate content because it sees it uh, in other places and helps people find it. There are free or inexpensive tools for editing videos if you want. You can record in Zoom. PowerPoint has recording tools. There's a free uh, recording screen recording tool called Open Broadcaster Software. Uh, you can download that for free. You can use it. There are free video editing tools. At this point, I actually use the Adobe editing tool, which is not free uh, because I, I use it enough. But uh, you can actually do this with like a relatively low cost. And uh, the real cost though is your time, right? Like it may take you, it may take you hours to do, uh, to do some of these things. Uh, I think like on average, like to make a five to 10 minute video probably takes five to 10 hours or three, and it takes a long time because you have to make the content, you have to uh, you know, edit it then so it's appropriate length and kind of make sure it's, make sure it's ready. You can make a profit, okay, but a small one. Um, YouTube does allow monetization, like after you have 10,000 uh, view hours and 1,000 subscribers. Um, you, can, you can have like brand links, like I, I link to, you know, I trash books, but I do link to books on Amazon, like and tell people like if you, if you are a book sort of oriented learner, like, you, you know, you can get some, uh, some things for that. You can charge for subscriptions or premium content. I have not done that for a couple of reasons. Like one, I'm committed to open education uh, for students and, and learners in the US, outside the US. I think a lot of the views come from people who don't have resources in countries that don't have the resources that we have. Uh, so I think that that's, uh, that's important. Um, this just kind of tells you, I mean, so you get about $4 per thousand views on YouTube. So that 40th of a cent is about right. Um, so I can get about $125 a month from YouTube after six years and thousands of hours of labor. Um, <laughs> But, you know, I spend that money, I spend it on the web hosting, I spend it on the software. Um, my goal is like not to lose money, right? Like I, I, because if at first I was spending my own money like for these things, I'd rather not be like shoveling money like in a fire. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I'm not getting rich off of this. I saw a news article today that Selena Gomez is a billionaire uh, because of her, you know, social media promotion of her, of her makeup. I just aspire to that, but there aren't that many nerds out there, I guess. 30,000 is a lot, but it's not enough. I need like 400 million. 
Um, this is my favorite slide here. There's going to be some haters. Uh, mostly they're centered around my voice. I, I, don't, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm going to read some of these because I think it's funny. And, and then I'll, I'll kind of wrap things up here. The language is a little bit salty, so this is PG-13. The voice no good isn't clear. Okay, fair enough. Irritating voice. Why are you trying to talk like a robot? Please talk in a normal voice. It would be more helpful. You see, I gave it a thumbs down. I was like, that's not good. Can you please stop eating the mic? The mic is not edible, and I can't understand a single word you're saying. Or get your throat checked. I think you have laryngeal cancer. I think this is the right, the right audience here. Uh, it gets worse. I hate your voice shit. Um, yeah. Um, you sound like corpse. From a guy who's using Donald Trump as a picture. Um, and then my personal favorite, great video Vader. Uh, for, those, uh, for those Star Wars fans out there. Um, anyway, um, there are serious criticisms, right? There's areas for improvement, right? Like, there's an argument that videos promote a superficial understanding, right, that you can, uh, as opposed to books. I kind of think that we overestimate how much time people were spending reading articles and books, and it kind of overlooks different learning styles, but I think it is a legitimate critique. <clears throat> I think you can critique that there's not enough high-level content uh, in video format. You in this room can help fix that, right? Like, you are the experts. Like, our societies and individual experts can help fix that. And I think that uh, I would encourage you all to do those things. If you wanted to do stuff with me, you want to collaborate, send me an email. Like, we can, uh, we can definitely do that. Uh, people say, like, oh, it's not peer reviewed. It may have errors. I don't know when we ever cared about that. Like, people were never peer reviewing books. Like, these books are full of errors, too. Uh, the comments, you know, I made fun of them. Like, I had a video on meningiomas, and I said meningioma is a tumor rising from the dura, and someone chimed in and they said, no, meningiomas don't arise from the dura, they rise from the arachnoid capsules in the arachnoid. And I was like, well, that's interesting. And then I looked it up and they were right. So people are paying attention to this. You're getting peer reviewed about your voice. Um, anyway, like I went over time a little bit, like mostly to make jokes, but uh, I, I think that like, we need to meet people where they are. I think you've seen a variety of educational things here uh, in this session this morning. And uh, I think it's been a great session. Hopefully this inspires you to think about like how can you go out and spread your message like a little bit broader? How can you, uh, can you distribute knowledge to people who aren't, who aren't getting it otherwise? Uh, so thanks for your attention and sorry for going over time to read stupid, stupid comments. Thank you so much. That was uh, very inspirational. Thanks for telling someone from my generation how to do it. Um, speakers were all perfectly in time, but unfortunately that leaves no time for questions. I encourage you, though, to come to stage or talk to them during the coffee break that's coming up. Thank you for attending this session. Thank you for co-moderating, and thank you, Christine, for inviting us and allowing this type of joint like, sessions uh, between Europe and the United States. <laughs>